nine seven three Sierra Delta Executive Tower proceed on course to Northwest for nine one six cliff takeoff. I'm course to Northwest cliff takeoff one six three Sierra Delta. Thanks. Well, hello and welcome. My name is Mark Epner. I'm a Chicago-based pilot with over half of my two thousand plus hours in a Cirrus SR twenty two. And believe me, I love flying every bit as much as you do. So I find ways to share my passion like this channel on YouTube. Well, recently I was asked to share how to fly a localizer back course approach with the Garmin Perspective, which of course is nothing more than the Cirrus variant of the G1000, even with and down to the GFC 700 autopilot. The back course approach is not a common approach anymore, although there are 66 of them in the U.S., but it's still an important approach to stay proficient on if you travel to any of the many airports that still utilize this option. What makes this even more of a compelling request is for those of you that use the autopilot or flight director because there is a gotcha here that can create a huge distraction at the worst possible time. And I'm not talking about the issue of reverse sensing, which can occur if you don't dial on the inbound front course on your HSI for a back course. So we're going to fly the Localizer Back Course 7 approach at KSQI, Sierra, Quebec, India. That's Whiteside County Airport in Illinois. And I'm going to fly it twice today. First, I'm going to do a full approach, and then I'm going to do one uh, vectors to final. On the full approach, we're going to use jig row as our initial approach fix, which is also the final approach fix, by the way. So we're not going to use AT, but we'll assume I've been cleared for the approach with a crossing restriction of 3,000 feet of jig row at which point I'll turn outbound to execute the procedure turn. We'll pick it up at the point that I will identify after the fact with that graphic arrow. My purpose today is not to discuss power settings and airplane, con airplane configuration, but rather to show you what can confuse pilots when using the GFC 700 as developed for the Cirrus perspective, and there are other variants that will have the same issue. But first, some basics. We're going to look at the PFD here, and at the top of the PFD is your scoreboard, as many people call it, or your status bar. And it tells you so much at the first sign that you have any confusion about what the airplane did, this is where your eyes should go to. The top line tells us what you've told the airplane to do, navigation-wise. Essentially, what's the next fix, and distance, and estimated time en route. The next line is all about the autopilot or flight director. Anything you see in green is active, and anything in white is armed, or I actually usually say standby. It also tells you what autopilot mode you're in. And then moving down from the scoreboard, in the main part of the PFD, of course, you get the HSI with the course deviation indicator, the CDI. If they're magenta in color, you're navigating by GPS or satellite-based signal. And if they're green, you're navigating by the ground-based signal, meaning you're like a VOR, a localizer, ILS or back course, which of course are still localizers. And sometimes the GA-1000, if you're on an approach, will switch from magenta to green automatically. But you can always switch it between modes by pressing the CDI button on the PFD. Now, the process may vary from pilot to pilot, but Cirrus teaches us a common process when flying an instrument approach. First, we select and load the approach when you know what approach to load. Duh. <laughs> that can be picked up from ATIS, from approach, or even center. And then once ATC provides you a vector, or if they clear you to an initial approach fix, that's when you activate the approach. And then finally, when ATC clears you for the approach, it's time to push the APR button. Now, the APR button is different from NAV by increasing the sensitivity of the CDI, and it also adds vertical guidance to the autopilot or flight director, which makes sense as you can't descend until you're actually cleared for the approach. But there is one approach you can't use the APR button on, and you guessed it, it's the back course. Further, the back course is the one approach which doesn't automatically switch you from magenta needles to green needles. The pilot has to do it manually by pressing the CDI button on the PFD. And if you don't, you'll get an alert message that basically says select the proper source on the CDI. And yet with all that explanation, guess what? I still haven't gotten to the gotcha I've been discussing. 
So let's go ahead and fly the procedure. I'm in GPS mode here, as evidenced by the magenta needles and, of course, by the status bar, or again, the scoreboard. The reason I chose the magenta needles is because the autopilot will not fly the procedure turn automatically with the green needles. Certainly, you could fly the full approach with the green needles and just use the heading mode and the heading bug to turn outbound and then inbound on that procedure turn. It's a personal preference. By the way, as a side note, when the actual procedure turn is in magenta on the map, as you see on my inset here, that's your clue that the autopilot can fly it for you because it follows the magenta line. Some older non-WAS uh, autopilots didn't, however, so there is an exception. So once I am flying inbound, I set the heading bus as appropriate for this case and switch to heading mode on the autopilot. Okay, now I reconfirm the localizer is identified on the MFD. And then I press the CDI button to switch to the green needles and then press nav on the GFC 700. When I do that, you'll notice the scoreboard shows the letters LOC and then BC in white. That means the back course is armed. And when it captures the localizer, the BC letters on the scoreboard flash green and then becomes a steady green. The scoreboard says it all. So what's the gotcha? Well, here's the gotcha. If you look at the lights on the autopilot, you won't see any on the Cirrus GFC 700 and some other variants. It just goes dark. That's when pilots who are expecting to see Annunciator go crazy. They start pushing buttons, and it doesn't matter whether they push the APR or the nav. It will light up, but when it does, it puts you into wings level roll mode and moves LOC to armed and not active. So the pilot is focused on pushing buttons, trying to get on the BC with the appropriate lights on the autopilot. I think that'll never happen. The only indication you'll get is BC on the scoreboard. And once you do it, good to go. The causes of this is because if you look at the GFC 700 on the perspective, there is no BC button or REV for reverse button like some autopilots have. So if there's no button to light up, it's not going like, to light up. So really needs to get the pilot, when you don't see lights, to know that the autopilot is on, you're only going to check the PFD and the scoreboard. And the lesson here is to do that. And it makes sense because if you think about it, you want it part of your scan. You've got your head on the PFD, and it's really not conducive to safe and stable approach flight if you're scanning over to the center console. The scoreboard, CDI, airspeed, attitude, VSI, all of that is right in the scan right on the PFD. So I hope this has been helpful, but if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I look forward to having you fly with me again next week. Blue skies and tailwinds.